Hello everyone. Thank you for watching Edupedia World videos. We have already covered within SAP Finance and Controlling Overview the topics like the finance integration, general ledger, and accounts payable. We will now look into accounts receivable as a module. Similar to accounts payable, where you had the vendor transactions which were recorded in FI. Over here in accounts receivable, you have the customer related transactions which are recorded in financial accounting. There is a real time integration done where the reconciliation GL accounts are triggered at first the invoicing stage and then again they are cleared at the payment stage. So the AR module, the accounts receivable module will handle the incoming payments and it will monitor the overdue payments and finally it will do the reporting. Similar to accounts payable process which involved a vendor which we saw earlier, in this case accounts receivable process is involving a customer. The process starts with when you create a billing document in sales and distribution module. This billing document gets also created automatically in finance at the same time. On the other hand, while you're doing this in SAP, you are sending this invoice copy to the customer. Once this posting is done in finance, the reconciliation account is triggered. The reconciliation account is nothing but a compilation of your customers, which we saw earlier. Once you receive the payment from the customer, this reconciliation account is triggered automatically again when you receive the payment from the customer. And this clears out your reconciliation account balance. Let us look at this as an example. So over here, you have an open item wherein your accounts receivable customer is debited for, let's say, $100. And you have credited your revenue and your VAT account accordingly. Now, when the customer is making a payment, you will do a clearing. And this clearing can be done automatically without any manual intervention also. The clearing account, the clearing transaction will look like your bank account is debited and your customer account is credited. So if you're from an accounting background, you will now understand that a debit of the customer and a credit of the customer nullifies the entry totally, which means now you're only left with a revenue account which was credited and this goes into your uh, PNL, and on the other hand, your bank account is debited because you've received money in, and this goes as a part of your current asset in your balance sheet. So this is how the set off is done between an open and then a cleared item. The next topic, let's look at cash management. This is a very small module and there are many clients who do not opt to implement this because they prefer doing the cash management offline by using their shared services team either onshore or offsite. Cash management is nothing but managing your outgoing and incoming payments and keeping a track of the exchange differences. In many big companies who do international transactions they have to be aware of the exchange differences that occur from time to time. When they make a transaction, there may be an exchange rate of an X amount and that rate will change when the actual payment has been received or made. Cash management team also looks into things like processing the payments and making sure that if the partial payment is made, then we have to chase customers for the next payment etc and these transactions then flow into general ledger 
Similarly, you see there's another slide on the incoming payment side. It's exactly the same, wherein you are again updating your exchange rate differences and you're posting into general ledger. Cash management report will include different kind of instruments. For example, your cash position, your liquidity forecast, your bank reconciliation statements. Usually bank reconciliation is done at every month end. And different kind of data is used to create these different documents. For example, your bank accounts, your payment advices, your balances from accounts receivable, accounts payable, etc. are all utilized to create these different reports under cash management. Also, the frequency of these reports depends on the management of the company, how frequently they want these reports to be shown or displayed within the company. The cash position report will describe all the short term movements that occur in the bank account. A liquidity forecast report will give you the medium term movements that occur in sub ledger accounts. And lastly, the bank reconciliation report will give you the adjustment between the bank statement with the book record. So if there are any differences, then they need to be found out as to why they occur and they need to be resolved. Next small topic is tax accounting. SAP also provides you tax accounting provision. For example, if you have an international business, then there may be different kind of VAT percentages which you need to record in your system. Also, even if you don't have a lot of international business, but you do have domestic business, but with different kind of products, then the VAT percentage will differ from the type of goods or services. So mainly VAT covers the tax code. A tax code is nothing but it's a two digit or two characters which can be alphanumeric and they define what exactly is your VAT percentage or the type of tax. You can have as many tax codes as you want in a company and they have to be differentiated between outgoing tax codes and incoming tax codes. For your outgoing transactions with a customer, it is called an output tax code. For your incoming transactions with a vendor, these are called input tax codes. We will look into tax codes in detail later on. Now let's move on to some of the CO related sub modules. Let's look at cost controlling. Cost controlling is a very wide and vast subject. Within cost controlling, you will have the hierarchy, which we've already seen earlier, where you have a controlling area, you can have multiple company codes, then you have the cost center hierarchy and the fund center structure. The cost center hierarchy is nothing but a hierarchy which the management of a company decides they can divide into finance, operations, support, etc. They can also add HR to this if required. Now let's look at what exactly is a cost center. A cost center represents the responsibility area that generates and influences the costs. For example, you can have a cost center which is specific to logistics, which is also even more specific to a location. And that cost center can be used to book your expenses against. And this at the end of the quarter or mid year or annual year will give you a right reporting and give you the figures against that particular cost center, which you have booked throughout the year. There are again naming conventions which are used for cost centers and this differs from company to company. Over here, it's just an example which tells you what should the cost center start with. 
if it starts with A, it's for the company code, for B is the admin group, etc, etc. So this can differ from company to company. Also some companies only prefer having numerical call centers and no alphabets at all. Fund center represents the structural grouping and departments and the responsibility areas and projects within the organization unit. Only certain cost element groups will be activated. For example, community development, sponsorship, charitable donation, etc. There are two different types of cost elements. One is a primary cost element, which will originate in finance from equivalent accounts. So this means that finance and controlling have a common link using primary cost elements. But secondary cost elements only emphasize on internal allocation and they do not have any connection with finance. Commitment items represent the functional grouping of expenditures and revenues within a financial management area. And we will be looking into all these items like cost centers, profit centers, cost element types, commitment items in the next couple of videos where we will look into the CO module in more detail. We also have activity types and this is basically the type of work produced by a cost center for the benefit of other cost center. Activity types use tariff and unit of measurement to charge the other cost object. For example, if you've done 10 hours of consulting and then there's a rate attached to it, these are the different concepts which are used for activity types. Again, statistical key figures represent values that are used as an allocation base to allocate costs from one cost center to another cost object. Over here you see cost allocation, which is a process of attributing cost to particular cost centers. For example, if you have a telephone charge from November and there is a clearing cost center where you've done plus and minus of the amount, this allocation needs to be done under different categories. For example, long distance calls, short distance calls, etc. Only within long distance calls, you may have different categories as well, depending on how the organization wants to allocate their costs. And this is used later on for internal management reporting, where they can analyze where are they spending more than their budget and where they're spending less. You can also distribute your costs. For example, if you have a cost within three different cost elements, you can distribute them into another three different cost elements, completely different. Or you can do it the other way around where you're doing an assessment where you want to combine the cost from three different cost elements into one. This is called distribution and assessment and is also one of the cost allocation methods. Planning in cost center and planning in fund center is again done by using the cost element level or by resources like materials, services, etc. And they're broken down into periodic planning like months or annually or weekly, etc. So that's all for now. We will cover the forthcoming topics as you see on the screen in the coming few videos. Thank you very much for your time and thank you very much for watching Edupedia World Videos.